All right, so thanks for being here. Um, I'm gonna do, basically, it says two things, but I'm actually gonna do three things. I'm gonna, I always do a kind of like a preamble about the sanctuary, just kind of get your kind of bearings on what the sanctuary is, etc. And then I'm gonna really focus on these two things, Black Abalone and Big Sur and what's going on with that. Basically, like you guys were at Big Creek yesterday, yep. and that's actually one of our study sites. And then I'm gonna talk about something different that I haven't talked to previous classes about, but is, is a major um, part of my portfolio of work this year, is doing a climate vulnerability assessment. And I don't know if you guys have even ever heard of that, but it's kind of a part of climate adaptation um, and that whole process. Okay, go ahead and hit the space bar. So we are um, one of many and a growing number of national marine sanctuaries and marine national monuments. And so we're up here, uh, Monterey Bay, and there's a series of sanctuaries. Um, the Greater Fairlands, Coral Bank, and Monterey Bay are basically all contiguous with one another. And then we have Channel Islands down in your neck of the woods. Obviously, you guys yep. know that one. There's, and, and that's also with Channel Islands National Park Service, too. They, they have overlapping jurisdictions and areas. Also on the West Coast, we have the Olympic Coast National Marine Sanctuary, and I do work up there as well. Um, for the last about six or seven years, I've been diving along the coast of um, the Olympic Peninsula into, uh, um, into the Straits. And then we have several out on the East Coast. We also include freshwater, um, uh, so it's not just marine, it's marine and freshwater. And we have under our jurisdiction, um, Papahanaumokuakea, which is out basically in the Hawaiian Islands, which for like, a, like six months was the largest marine protected <laughs> area in the world. And then got blown out of the water by the Marianas um, protected area, which is even bigger. But anyways, it's in our portfolio of, of areas that are um, under uh, sanctuary uh, management. And then um, there's new ones. And so uh, Mallows Bay was just, um, became a sanctuary about a year ago. There's probably also down by you guys going to be Chumash yep. Heritage National right. Marine Sanctuary. That's in the pipeline. Um, and so one of the things that people sort of always ask about, like, so what's the big deal about a sanctuary? So sanctuaries, basically under the National Marine Sanctuaries Act, which is the, the act of Congress that allows you to establish sanctuaries, the big prohibition is basically oil, gas, and mineral exploration and, and basically extraction. So that's where that's sort of prohibited. And the reason why in California, Monterey Bay became a National Marine Sanctuary back in 1992, so we're having our 30th anniversary right now, um, was Leon Panetta, who was a congressman at that time, before he was head of the CIA, before he was chief of the White House staff and all that other stuff, he basically was working with people to say, look, we don't wanna have oil rigs off our coast like what you guys see down south, mm -hmm. okay? And people back then, it was still a recent, relatively recent memory about the oil spill that happened down in Southern California in the- What uh, year? What year, people? Thank yes, you. I was gonna say in the late 60s. That basically caused a lot of these things, you know, a lot, you know, clean water. I mean, a lot of things were motivated by, whoa, when you get all this oil on shore, it changes, it, it kills lots of things. It changes um, your perspective on what's going on with those oil rigs, because you usually just think, oh, it's just a thing sitting out there, lights up at night, whatever, nothing happens. Well, stuff does happen. And so Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, which extends from Cambria, so near, so did you guys go to the Rancho Marino? Yep. So that's like our southern border, goes all the way north of San Francisco Bay, basically to Stinson Beach. So it's, it's almost 300 miles of coastline, and it covers over 6,000 um, square miles. Uh, I'll go ahead and click on the next one. Um, so here's the, the actual map. So you can see there's what we call the donut hole right here, which excludes a lot of sewer outfalls, etc. So when they were trying to negotiate with, hey, we want to put a sanctuary in, a lot of the municipalities were like, hey, we don't need more regulation. So there's carve outs. And that's part of, that's part of politics and, and how the sausage gets made. There's always horse trades and deals that are happening. And so we're, we're down here, Monterey. And so we're kind of in the middle. And then one thing that was added um, is Davidson Seamount, which was the first of the seamounts that was kind of discovered and mapped and kind of recognized as a seamount. It's basically a, a very, very old, millions of years old volcano. 
And so um, it sticks up off the bottom um, so a couple thousand meters, but it's about 3,000 meters deep. So it's really, you know, it's tough to get to it except by using really deep, uh, long tethered uh, ROVs. So anyways, um, here's just some of the stats. Like I said, we have almost 300 miles. Um, our deepest point is down here on Davidson Seamount. And then we've got a wide variety of mammals, fishes, birds, turtles come visiting, um, invertebrates, uh, lots and lots of invertebrates. We just, we don't even list like the species because we're still <laughs> trying to figure out how many species we have. And so that's actually a, pro a project we've been doing for about the last five years with undergraduates who have um, scholarships from NOAA and, and work on it for um, a summer. And so we've had multiple people working on that, basically gathering information from museums, Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History is one of the ones that they've used. And so we have a whole team of people and we're, we're already up to, I think it's about uh, six or 6,000 species for Monterey. Wow. Um, and so, but we're still adding some of the really uh, not thought about phyla, which are, there's not a lot of information, um, but a lot of the things we have pretty good information for. So at some point we're actually gonna have a number. The fishes, are actually long. This is a, this is, I haven't updated this. There's over 500 species of fishes that's been actually done, like with experts from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. So we know what that is, like probably within 10 species, give or take. Mm -hmm. So that we really got that. And then another, um, the the algae have been done uh, by Dr. Kathy Ann Miller, who's um, in, uh, um, at the Jepson Herbarium at UC Berkeley, and she manages the algal collection. So. Um, I'm sure that's going to be bigger, but we also have new things showing up. Like you guys probably are aware of like Sargassum horneri and other species, invasive species, Andaria, and that yeah. show up. So anyways, um, go ahead and hit next one, please. So one thing I want to share with you guys, it's free. So like you can do it right now or when you go home, but check out C photo. It's all one word and it's uh, basically an online tool for you to ID birds, mammals, algae, fishes, inverts, etc. We've got um, uh, over 500 species on there, lots of photographs. I initially, when I started working here, like I knew nothing about birds. I still know very little about birds, but it was sort of like, okay. Gotta learn. What's a branch cormorant versus a pelagic cormorant versus a double crested cormorant? Because there's like, there's three cormorants. And people are like, what's that cormorant? I'm like, I don't know. And then, uh, you know, through building this app and stuff, it's like, okay, you know, the, the branch cormorants have this blue throat on, you know, and during breeding season, pelagics have these white patches. You, know, you can see pictures of that and you can get information about key features that help distinguish one species from another. So anyways, it's free, check it out. The cool thing is it doesn't download all of the species, so it doesn't bog up the memory in your, in your phone. It's just whatever you're like, oh, I wanna learn about this one, then it'll take, and grab that particular species so you don't have to worry about, oh my lord, this thing is massive. So, I mean, if you downloaded all of them, it would be a big app on your phone. But anyways, check it out, it's free, government paid for it. Sweet. Take advantage of it. All right, next please. And then the other thing that's free is, so Sean's kind of talking about the monitoring. When I first started working here, which is over 20 years ago, uh, just this year, um, I started working for this, this program called the Sanctuary Integ Integrated Monitoring Network, Simon. And I started as a contractor. So I, I finished graduate school, I was looking for jobs. This one came across, it's like, hey, we need a field biologist and we need someone to help with some grant, um, you know, doling out grant money, et cetera. And one of the things we did early on was building a website, which back then was like HTML, really kind of, you know, old, old school stuff. And so we've been, building and adding this website um, out that has lots and lots of information on it. And there's basically three really popular areas. Um, the, the most popular is the photo library. We have almost 6,000 photos on there. They're all in the public domain, so you can grab them and use them. Um, we ask that you cite us, but it's like, I see them on Wikipedia all the time. I'll be like, <laughs> I'll be like cruising around and checking out a link and be like, God, that picture looks really familiar. And it's like, oh, someone grabbed it because it's free. And um, so this is super popular. The next one is our species database. So this is what that C photo app is pulling from. And this has a lot more information than what's on, on um, uh, C photo by itself because it goes into detail. This is like your online field guide. 
And so that's where we have a lot of information, a lot of people checking that out, and we're constantly adding to that. And then the, the project database, we have almost 200 published projects. Some projects are secret because they might be about an endangered species, so they're only available to staff because we need to know about them, like for permitting issues, for if there's an oil spill or a vessel grounding and people need to like, they can't contact me and they can look up in, in our base, but we don't want people to know where those endangered species are because it could lead to poaching. And we know that some of them, particularly like black abalone, get poached. So, th so we have more than what's publicly available, but like 98% of them are available to anybody. So you can learn about this. And then we have something here where we have news, um, where we try and have something like usually once or twice a month, something that's kind of cool um, to come up. And then there's all kinds of information about different habitats, about different areas in the sanctuary. We've got um, tools that have maps, interactive maps, there's all kinds of cool stuff. So this is a place where if you just want to learn more about the habitats and the species and things that are associated with the sanctuary, great, great resource. Way better than what we have on our government website because this is a .org. So it's sanctuarysimon.org. You actually click the next one, I think it has the, yeah, there it is. Sanctuarysimon.org is the URL. That, because it's a .org and we, and we have partners who are contributing to this, it's not just a .gov site, I could go on there, load something up, post it in like five minutes versus if we want to do it on the government website, we have to get it checked off here. It goes back to Silver Spring, Maryland in DC. It gets checked off there. Then it has to keep put on the servers there. Whereas this is on, we, we have a, a commercial server that we pay for to do it. So it gives a lot of flexibility. And that's why some people are like, well, why isn't it MBNMS or Monterey Bay Sanctuary? That's why we have an official government website, but that's much more, um, Kind of restri restricted what can be put on there because totally. it's a .gov totally. versus the .org. We have a lot more flexibility, which is great. So, like when it's something crazy happens, we can post it on here the same day. It's going to take like a week, even at the speed of light, as government moves to get it on the government side. So, so check that out, sanctuarysimon.org. The other one that we have on there is is this is the newest is the ecosystem trends. One of the things that we're doing, and this is with a lot of academic partners, okay, a lot of universities, some NGOs and other um, state and federal agencies is, typically we have to assess the status and trends of the resources that we manage on like a five to 10 year cycle. And it's usually takes like three or four years <laughs> just to do that process. So it feels like you just finished and you gotta start all over again. What we're trying to do here with the ecosystem trends is have a lot of that information that's now being collected by our partners and in many cases is being posted somewhere else like on data one or some other place where they can store the data we now want to display those data in almost but not quite near as it's in not real time it's in deposited time as in when they <laughs> deposit it that's when we can start um, showing it and so we're working really hard we have a um a, a, a researcher who is also from a uh, PhD from UC Santa Cruz uh, named Je Dr. Jan Brown. And she works um, closely with a lot of people to get that stuff up there. So that's kind of a cool one where you can kind of go, let me go check out you know, like Ochre Stars and you can look at sites and you can see they have interactive little plots that'll show you whether they're increased or you're decreasing. You can go, oh, this is when Sea Star Wasting came in and nuked them. So anyways, um, we're trying to get that for as many of the resources that are in the sanctuary or that we directly manage as possible. Okay, go ahead and next one, please. 